said I would. So you've been a good friend. Show you. And that's in the second Show you how to make injection port jars with vents so that you can do stuff like this. Um, can't really see any. You can see some squiggles from the noodles on the bottom there. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I'm not gonna show myself in this video because it's not about me. And also, I thought it's easier to follow along when you're looking at the same view that you're gonna be doing when you're doing something. So, first person view. This was coffee grounds, pasta, and rice colonized and grew really quickly. Still no signs of contamination about six months or so later. So that's pretty great. Right, so uh, I also don't think you need to use quart sized jars. That's uh, just the most common thing people use when they're growing industrial scale, I think. Uh, PF Tech, this is more of the size that you use, and you can still do the same process with these. This is like over a year old. Very shrunken little guy now. It was the full jar, I think. Yeah, this was just rye grains. All right, uh, onto the task at hand. Let's get the rice out of the way. No rice today. Uh, tools you'll need. Really, I'm going to try and show you a couple different things here. Got some throwing knives, a little pick, a screw, a knife with a broken tip. Um, where? Ah, yeah. My favorite multi tool is a uh, Swiss Army one had it since, I don't know, 2013 or so, at least 10 years, lost a few bits, but it's cool because it has a screwdriver on the side, so you don't always have to pull out the multi-tool to use a screwdriver, you just grab a bit, stick it in there, and you can reach more, have low torque, or not reach as much and have higher torque. <laughs> So that's fun. It's also the only multi-tool I know of that comes with a corkscrew and a little tiny eyeglass screw in the middle there. And I've never broken any of the bits on this either. Uh, my old, I used to get issued these like candy in the military, the old Leatherman's. I would bet that like 50% of the bits are broken broken knife, missing pieces. You can't really even see all the tools in here because they're broken off. Can openers are usually the first thing I break. There's a bit missing. Yeah, just like, probably the bits that are missing are because they're broken. Can openers are amazing for getting out like stuck pieces of pipe when the threads break off, when you're getting the threads out, but the tips break off. So a little bit too much on the tools, but if you're using a Leatherman or something, then, oh, this is so old. Leathermans that I have were all issued, I think, so probably over 10 years old. Yeah, you can see the rust. I've never seen rust on this guy. This is like so, such better quality steel. You can just feel the weight of it. It's better. This is quality. This is cheaply made for Americans. But also, uh, bits like this on either tool, that's the point, would be great for making these lids. Oh, let's clean up a bit here. So that's an idea of what we'll use to stab into these lids, because that's the technique we're using. Oh, there's even these yeah, little throwing knives. Anything that's got a full steel shank from here to here is really going to be good, so you can hammer on it if you need to.
hard if you need to. But I'm going to bet that these lids are so thin, you can just push, yep, and twist. And there's a hole. That's good enough for a needle or a vent. It doesn't have to be measured precisely like everyone will try and show you in other videos online. And we just need two holes. So push gently, let it sink, twist, there, injection port vent or vice versa. And then I use this because I already had this on hand for uh, car repairs and stuff. Why did I decide that this will be as adequate as other options? Well, if it's made for a car, it's going to be rated for uh, easily the same as the pressure cooker is going to go to or significantly higher. It's probably going to be at least 280 degrees or 300 degrees when it's something that's for a car. So next all we have to do on our jar where we stab the lid. So let's say, let's use the smaller one for injection so that it's more likely to not become an issue and the larger one will be for stuffing. Ideally you would clean this surface really well. We'll just do it with what we've got right here. Put a bump of this on here. I think there was a dried surface so it didn't really stick. And if you want to, you can go on the inside of the jar and put another little bump. So then it's got like continuous, once this is dry, if you want to scrape off some excess while it's still wet, that's a great time. I don't care about the inside. I'm not aiming at the inside. When I'm aiming to stab, I want to know roughly where the center is. So it is a little helpful to clean this out, but it doesn't really matter because you'll just poke around with the needle until you find it. So there, that's one jar glued. And now you wait for it to dry. If you want to, while you're waiting for it to dry, you can grab some pillow stuffing. I want to get this pillow out of my way since I'm doing this kind of a single shot. I don't want to mislead you about how long it takes or anything. We're just going to pull out some pillow stuffing. Not all pillows are going to be the same. I had to check. I mean, this was the first one I tried. You can kind of feel through it and you'll feel this kind of soft fiber, but that's not always the whole story. I've opened up some and it's more like a memory foam blend or something. And that stuff will probably melt. So you don't want to use that. This stuff seems to be much higher temperature. I don't think I've changed these on these jars and I've run them through the pressure cooker I would say at least six, seven times probably since I made those. Right, but back to this, let's finish up this one jar lid. So you don't even take very much. Just grab some pillow stuffing. I try and ball it up so that like those frizzy bits hopefully get mostly mixed up in there because they're kind of annoying. And then just feed it through. Those sharp bits on the inside, be careful of those. You can flatten them out if you want to, even just using something like a rock and just push. But we don't really need to because it's on the inside. You're never going to touch there and hopefully there's going to be stuffing. It'll help grab the stuffing and hold it in there too. But that's it. Take a look around your glue one more time. Make sure it looks set. It almost doesn't matter that I didn't clean around the outside or the inside because I have continuous glue going to either side. So as it dries, it's going to form like two caps on either side of the hole and hold itself in there. And there's a brand new jar. I think every video I've watched in the past, they're like, make sure it's completely dry before you pressure cook it. And I'm like, why? Heat usually makes things set faster. Okay, so this one, 
clearly says allow 24 hours to fully cure before filling with fluids or returning to service this is for a car so I've let it go as little as just until I can touch it and it doesn't and it's not tacky so this is an example of still tacky this is not but once you can touch it and it's got kind of a skin it'll lose its shine it'll start to look kind of faded like these you can see one's like kind of wet looking the other looks drier so I've actually like put them in the pressure cooker while it's still a little soft on the inside and dry on the outside and I've had no issues so you don't even have to wait for it to fully dry ah bonus tip here let's get this fucking pillow out of here okay so that's for the next jars which tools I'll keep this to keep cleaning up stuff I thought I had a rag around here there it is you just use paper towel or rag whatever to, to wipe this up okay uh, this doesn't seem like a very common tool. I also should have said wear eye protection for sure if you're ever going to hammer anything. If I'd been using this tool, I could have just put it like this and probably bopped it with my hand, or taken a rock and tapped it through. You probably don't have this tool, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, what else do we have? If you've got any metal skewers, This should be pretty easy. Don't do as I do. Okay, this is a slightly tougher lid. So if you can't just stab it through. I just grabbed a rock from the yard. You don't even have to get really aggressive. Go gently. This is glass. Be gentle. The point is going to do all the work. So these are just to start these holes. I didn't have to hit really hard, it just sounded louder because of these pots over here. So that's even good enough. Like, you could make this work, but you can also just make the holes a bit bigger by sticking things in there, working them around. Uh, what else do we have? If you've got, like, you know, these things from grilling, the safest way to do this is always going to be to remove the lid completely from the jar, put it on a block or a cutting board, and then get after it. So this one, I'm curious now, with this tool, and get another jar. So like if we put this down here on a wooden block, and I had this here. two holes just like that once they're started easy to take a knife or anything and make them bigger you might want to make them bigger from the outside going in that's almost too big let's make this one just slightly bigger with the knife again and that's it it's that easy this one's going to be covered up with the glue so whatever sharp is on the outside if you don't want sharp on the outside you can also just kind of scrape it work it in but again there's going to be pillow stuffing on both sides of this you can take the rock smash the sharp things down hammer if you want to whatever you want to do the point is you're putting access through a thin metal lid so now we've got holes in that one these are a bit small. Another thing you could use is just a simple corkscrew. They always, a lot of them seem to have these tools on them, which is also going to be great for getting in here. Just get my light back. That fell over. So you can just stick anything in these holes at this point and just 
kind of push a little and rotate a little and go gently because it goes really easy once there's a started hole okay this one still smells like pickles alternatively if you thought I was starting with the corkscrew you were wrong but I am gonna finish with it so also to make holes bigger you can just take your corkscrew and run it through you're not gonna hurt it you can even almost indent them a little bit real easy so another simple tool to use Go ahead and slap a little glue on here. So again, a lot of people are going to tell you online, do this size and this size precisely, and they're, it's unnecessary. It literally just needs to be able to vent pressure. If you let it, if it, if the holes are big enough that it can breathe, then they fruit in the jar like this one. And that's not the goal. The goal is this. It should be able to fully colonize. This is also about six months old, different strain, rye grain only. Still viable, but very old. Nothing's fruited because there's enough that it can't get enough air. These I think were able to breathe because I did this in winter basically or spring and then we came into summer and our inside temperature is always a little warmer during the day but about the same at night. So a 10 degree fluctuation will make this expand and contract daily so it almost like it's breathing. So it's bound to happen no matter how good you make these if you wait long enough and if your conditions vary enough that you're going to have expansion and contraction just due to temperature changes. Let's pull this through. Again, there's some sharp bits there, but you're not really pushing on them. So once you pull this through, the sharp bits just grab it. You can't even really feel them through it anymore. And there's another one. <coughs> the other reason, actually the biggest reason you may not want to use quart jars and you might want to do this instead. Notice the height difference. Why is this significant? Every pressure cooker can be different pot size, which is why, now oh, let's get organized here. Just here, which is why I've brought these two here to show you that. This pot is from my instant pot and it's just deep enough that quart sized jars have been able to fit without issue. If you put anything under the quart sized jars, you have to be careful and try and get them in away from the edge because the seal comes down in here and takes up some space. So quart sized jars work for this. This is the biggest size instant pot that I know of. Uh, I think it's eight quart bought for me as a gift very kindly <laughs> by a lovely woman. So uh, the point I was making, so this was uh, another pressure cooker I bought, I found online offer up or Craigslist or something, I don't know, I'm not advertising for anybody. See how it's like just that much shorter? Well it's just enough that the lid for this one can't close with a quart sized jar in here. So if we take some recycled jars that are smaller than a quart size jar, we've solved that problem. And what's even cooler is the new pressure cooker has a larger diameter, which means theoretically, even though using smaller jars, I'm going to be able to do more jars, more weight maybe using this one that's shorter versus this one that's tall and skinny. So this is the beauty of making your own jars from recycled, upcycled, whatever you want to call it. 
there's no reason to buy jars because you're already buying jars if you're buying food and groceries. There's something in a jar in your house, without a doubt. I think that's pretty much the key points here. Demonstrated some different... You also don't need to use a pressure cooker. That's like pretty much a luxury item, but if you're going to grow mushrooms regularly, you're going to want it. It will probably save you some time and energy. Um, the induction cooker is super efficient compared to gas. Uh, about three to four times more efficient. Gas, the flame goes around the pot and you lose so much heat. Induction is exciting the metal of the pot, which means it's 100% almost heat transfer. You can't get higher efficiency than induction. Um, so you don't need to pressure cook though. That's where we were going. You can actually do it in the oven. Everything's just going to be slightly longer. Pasteurization, sterilization is always a combination of time and temperature. So you can totally pasteurize something at like 150 degrees if you did it for 24 hours, for example. If you raise that temperature to 250 degrees, then maybe you only have to do 60 minutes. Because you see what I mean? Um, if you look up sous vide cooking, that's it's all about that. It's totally what that is about. Uh, I guess I could. I guess I could demonstrate another tool. Uh, let's go from scratch with a corkscrew. Again, this ideally you're going to just take the lid off of the jar when you're doing this, and you're going to put something underneath the lid so when you go through it there's something to back it up. But also remember these are thin. You're going into a relatively hard but thin metal with something pointy and tapered. So as you enter like the taper is going to slow you down a little bit. This is much more aggressive because it's actually designed for cutting. But yeah, just sink in the tip, give it a little twist, and there's your hole. The drill bit uses a very similar method. It just rotates faster so it cleans off the shavings when you're doing it. And let's go for a slightly bigger. Ah, or we could use a different. What's it like starting with a corkscrew? Can you? Yes, you can. Interesting. Corkscrew is almost like one and done. Yeah, I mean, that's probably adequate. So also, if you make the holes too small, then you're just making it hard for yourself unnecessarily to get the stuffing through, to find the hole with the needle, all that. But these are definitely adequate. Once again, let's just take some glue. Go for the smaller one with the glue. Uh, RTV, gasket maker, whatever. Uh, and of course, all the links for the stuff that I'm using, almost all of them will be in the description. I don't know if you can buy Caduceus Cellars, uh, corkscrew on mine. Maybe you can on their website. Uh, might not, maybe not the throwing knives and stuff. This is just examples of things. Uh, if you can find an eye bolt, that's also great for making holes and stuff. Uh, hammering, whatever you can find. Like if you need to hammer and you want to do this. Like obviously something with a sharp tip is going to go in really easy. So now I've made another hole just to show you. So I'll go ahead and seal another hole because that's all it is and it's so easy when you know how and grab a little stuffing you might also just want to try and work a tip into it when you're doing this kind of balling it up yeah, I like to get it good and tight. Good and tight, 
Ja? Das ist gut. Mm. Learned a little German back in the day. So this is probably a little bit too much stuffing for the hole. I don't really care. It tends to kind of shrink and stuff over time, each cook maybe, in the pressure cooker. There's another lid, just like that. No tools needed, no purchase necessary. Recycling steps skipped. This didn't need to go anywhere. It stays in your home and you reuse it. Magic. Just magic. Uh, what else? You want me to demonstrate some more? Putting holes in lids? Here's another. So also, uh, worth mentioning, I've demonstrated mostly wide mouth. Wide mouth jars is always going to be the best. Um, when you're buying quart size jars, also, make sure you get wide mouth and not like skinny. It's, it's just going to be easier to work with. This is still very usable, so don't be afraid to use them. Just if you have lots of jars, choose the bigger one. You can also put this this way if you'd rather, and it might feel more steady. If you're having to use a lot of force and you have it this way, it might bend the lid this way, right? If you're pushing here. So if you do it flat on a wooden block or a cutting board or a fold up, folded up paper towel, I don't know. You just need something when you start it. Uh, sure, let's go with an eye bolt and a rock for this hole. There, hole started. You can even start it on the hard side and then enlarge it from the other side so that the sharps go in. Uh, if you're someone that's a mechanic and you've done a lot of car work, you might have what's called a scribe around. These are awesome tools for mechanicking, cleaning stuff, trying to retrieve stuff. And it's this point plus this elbow makes it great for a quick punch. So there we go. Another ultra simple. If you're using something like a screw, you can even just screw it in to enlarge the hole. But go slow, because I don't necessarily want it the size of the bolt. See? Bigger than we started with. See the size on this one. You do have to push fairly hard to get it to go. Oh yeah, not the most efficient. If you can get something with a sharp point to push in and twist, that's going to be better. And here we go, another another lid. You can also hopefully by now notice that there is so little of the silicone or TV whatever being used, high temperature stuff, that this is the only tube I've ever had so far. It goes a long way. You don't need a lot. I mean, you could probably do 100 jars with a tube. You could probably get a smaller tube if you wanted to. Okay, let's go with a bit less pillow stuff in this time. All oh, right, we're talking about sterilization. So you can also do the oven for like, I think it was maybe 250 degrees and then two hours to sterilize your grains or popcorn or whatever, rice, leftovers. Uh, which also means you could probably do it in an air fryer. Same temperature, just more efficient and more likely to use electricity instead of gas which means cleaner home, air quality wise. And there's another jar. There, we just made 
four jars, almost five once I get this one done. And if I was doing all these jars at once, can I, how many can I fit in my $20 pressure cooker? Oh, that one's a bit tall. That one might not work out. But all these little recycled jars fit just fine. And we could still fit a couple more. When I use this pot and quart size jars, actually, let's just throw quart size jars in this one and see what it looks like. If we were using only quart size jars in this one, see how they're already up. But they're also all the same diameter, which is another issue. But maybe, oddly enough, this one's so big you can almost fit six jars, except for the fact that they're too tall for the pot. So just because I can use this $20 pot, which is wider, with any jars I want, means I can actually do more per cook, per pressure cook sterilization in my $20 pot than I can with the $200 one. Also, don't mind these old jars. They were experiments that have long passed, but not film-wise. They live on forever there. Right. Uh, you can even use a sous vide cooker for sterilizing. Uh, and that was the last thing I needed to tell you. There is going to be a link to an article I found just yesterday all about this. And not this so much, but actual sterilizing, pasteurizing without a pressure cooker. That link will be in the description, of course. If it's not, please drop a comment and let me know. Hey, shithead, you forgot something. You who shit! Maybe something like that. You're gonna show us the cool link you found, shithead. You who? Okay. This is probably longer than intended. Uh, hopefully we covered everything. And you've seen that there's like, anything pointy will make a hole in a jar lid and make the hole bigger. Rocks is hammers. And I think that we're done for today. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you found any of this at all. Interesting, ridiculous, I felt good. Just sharing what I've come up with. Occam's razor, the simplest solution is typically the right one. Correct one, whatever. <laughs>